Howdy YouTube, Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. I thought I'd throw out a quick video today uh, before I left for uh, my little mini vacation. We are going to the Renaissance Festival uh, this weekend and uh, we're taking uh, a couple of folks that have never, a younger couple that have never been uh, to the Ren Fest before and so it should be an exciting weekend. It's about a two and a half hour drive to get there and a two and a half hour drive to get back and I don't like to drive but I'll suck it up for the sake of friendship. So today I want to talk to you about hypervisors. Um, this is, uh, if you ever watched my down the rabbit hole video where I compared ESXi to Hyper-V and did the speed tests and it just kept going down the rabbit hole and getting stranger and stranger, this is uh, part and parcel of that. I came across uh, uh, a YouTuber that I like to view uh, or I like to watch let me pull up their name here. It's Lawrence Systems, if you've ever watched any of their videos. Anyway, he's uh, he's runs his business pretty much on uh, Linux, and that's fine. But he uh, he was experimenting around with Zen Server, and I haven't used Zen Server in nearly five or six years. They're up to version 7.2 now. So I thought, I got that AMD quad core laying around with 16 gig of RAM, and I got spare hard drives laying around. Why don't I spin one up and... And use it as like a backup uh, virtual server like I had for ESXi. Well, I did that. And you're about to... And I went ahead and created some virtual machines on there. Uh, because uh, I needed a Windows 7 virtual machine. And I needed a Windows 10 virtual machine. So I spun those up. Did all the updates on them. And uh, got, them all, got them all ready to go. And so now the next part of the video, you're going to see what I discovered on these virtual machines. And I uh, directly compared them to a couple of Hyper-V machines with the same settings that I had set up. And I think the results will surprise you. So let's go to that video right now. So here I have my uh, Zen server. It's running uh, Zen 7.2, I believe. And I have already created a couple of virtual machines on here. One is a, a Windows 7 Pro uh, machine. And the other one is a Windows 10 uh, enterprise version. Uh, neither one of these have been joined to the domain. They, uh, let's see, the, uh, what do we have here? Under this machine, we have a single, we have two gig of RAM. Uh, let me see how many CPUs we have. We have one socket with one core per socket CPU. Read caching uh, is not licensed so it's not using read, read caching. Memory is 2 gig. Storage is a dynamically expanding 30 gig hard drive. Regular networking, it's part of my network, just not part of the domain. So let's go ahead and log in and we're gonna do a, uh, my standard is a uh, transfer test across the network. On a gigabit network, no matter what, whether you're using a virtual machine or whether you're using a standalone machine, you should be able to get 100 megabit sustained transfer speeds across the network. That's my benchmark, and that's what I'm going to use on this. So I'm going to compare these two virtual machines that are running Zen Server, just like I did with ESXi back in the back in my rabbit hole video, which started all this. Uh, because you know a lot of people question why I use Hyper-V, and you'll see why here in a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out to this virtual machine and I'm going to go out to, uh, let's see, do I have a drive map? No, I'm going to go out to my NAS, my Xphenology NAS, and I'm going to go out to the video directory and I'm going to copy my alien series of videos. So I'm going to right click on those and choose copy. And then I'm going to come here my test folder. I'm going to go ahead and select all of these and delete them. Okay, so they're gone now. Go to my desktop. I'm going to empty the recycle bin just to make sure they're actually gone. Now I'm going to go back to the test folder. I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose paste. And then we're going to monitor. So we're starting out pretty good. We start out at 100 megabits and then uh, it drops down to the 75 to 80 uh, megabit, megabyte, sorry, megabyte per second range. 
This is the same thing I was experiencing with uh, ESXi. Now, I don't care about CPU speed. When you're doing a data transfer, you're just doing a raw data transfer from a network uh, to, to a virtual hard drive. You should There should be nothing standing in the way. But this is what I'm talking about, about tuning out of the box. And you'll see what I'm talking about when we go over to the Hyper-V virtual machines. So, you know, 76 megabytes per second is nothing to sniff at, but on a gigabit network, you should be getting 100 megabytes or faster. The uh, network cards in here are real tech, but uh, I know when I've run Hyper-V on these real tech network cards, I always get 100 megabits per second. I've tested that before. So it might be the drivers with uh, Xpenology. I know a lot of people aren't very fond of real tech network cards, but this is the real world. This is where I want to, this is where I want to see uh, proof of the pudding. Now the reason I put a, a Zen server together is because I haven't used it in about five or six years. I actually preferred Zen server over ESXi. I just thought it had more features for the free version than ESXi had. So now you can see we're slowing down to 62.5. Now I'm not doing anything else on the network right now. I'm, I'm recording OBS to a scratch drive, an internal hard drive of my workstation. So it's not actually copying this data. Uh, on my OBS studio to the hard to the uh, NAS at the same time. There's nothing else touching that NAS as it does a copy. And this to me is the most important thing because if you don't have fast drive transfer speeds, um, it really it really slows down your virtual machines. Um, and you know in and just in general, this should be at least as fast as the network. Um, so what is it on these hypervisors that's getting in the way of data transfers? I don't know. It's certainly not the fact that it can't read the data from my uh, Xpenology server fast enough, as you'll see in a minute. All right, so that's the Windows 7 virtual machine that we've tried. Now let's go to the Windows 10 virtual machine, and let's try it over here. Uh, where is control alt delete there it is down there let me log on now Windows 10 has a new uh, TCP IP stack that's one of the reasons I've stayed with Windows 10 instead of going back to Windows 7 this has the and it uses SMB 3 which is the new uber SMB protocol so I'm just gonna go out here to my uh, to my NAS Bear with me. I'm going to go back to that video directory. I'm going to go to sci fi and I'm going to copy these alien videos. Right click, copy. And I'm just going to come, and again, this is a, let's give you the status on this. This is a, a Windows 10 machine. It has two virtual CPUs instead of one, it has four gig of RAM instead of two. It has a dynamically expanding uh, hard drive, etc., etc. So if I come here to my test folder, let me uh, select those and delete them. Okay, and then let's right click and paste. And again, we start out at 109 megabytes per second and then precipitously it drops just like the Windows 7 machine. So I don't, what I surmise is, I don't think this is a network issue at all. I think this has to do with the way that uh, Zen Server and ESXi treat their virtual hard drives. And I think it's my opinion that Microsoft has a leg up on both ESXi and Zen and transfer speeds. So this video is going to be a kind of a like a prove me wrong. And this is why I tend to stick with Hyper-V and come back to it time after time because it just seems like it's a little more optimized for virtual machines than, um, than Zen, uh, Zen Server or ESXi. I mean, you're seeing it for yourself right here. Now what brought all this about is I'm 
I'm gearing up to do my Windows Lab series. I'm starting to do those videos, and and uh, I I wanted to uh, have a uh, supplemental machine to put some virtual machines on. And of course, all the updates have been done. It's current. It's up to date. Both Windows 10 and Windows 7 has current drivers. Everything, current uh, integration services are installed and everything. And you can see it just starts out at 100 megabytes per second, then drops down to the 50s, the 60s, and the 70s. So it's not consistent. All right. So there we go. Now we're switched over to our Dell server. Uh, running Hyper-V and uh, let's go look at the settings for this Windows 7 Pro machine this is a gold master image I'm creating so same as the one on um, Zen server uh, it has two gig of memory uh, I have however given this one two virtual processors processors are not going to make a difference in, in transfer speed so just it, you can believe that if you want to but it's not but you can see it's got the same settings and it's got a dynamically expanding hard drive. If I click on inspect, it'll show you it's dynamically expanding virtual hard drive. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and log in now to the virtual machine. Now I'm not doing this through RDP, I'm doing it right on the console on Hyper-V, just so we get a fair comparison. And I'm gonna basically go do the same thing. I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna go out to my NAS, Go to my video folder, pick the Alien series, go back to my C drive, get rid of the ones that are out here, delete them, and then I'm going to empty the recycle bin just so I know there's no funny business going on. And now what I'm going to do is paste, and here we go. Hundred nineteen, hundred twelve, hundred and seven, hundred and eleven, hundred and eight. But you see my point. Started out at hundred megabytes per second on Zen and dropped down into the sixties and fifties. Whereas Hyper V, same settings, same dynamically expanding hard drive, same amount of memory. The only difference is I've got a, a, a dual core processor in here, but processor does not affect the transfer speed across the network or writing to the hard drive. My thought is that a Hyper-V has a better has done a better job. Now this is a VHD. It's not a VHDX. It's not a it's not a uh, type 2 virtual machine. This is a generation 1 Hyper-V virtual machine, but you can see my drive speed speeds are consistent. 100 megabytes per second the whole time. And that makes a big difference when you're dealing with a lot of data or copying a lot of data, which I do. I, uh, I, that's the majority of what I do is copying data, moving data around. All right, so that one worked. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to log out of this virtual machine. And we'll go to the Windows 10 Enterprise virtual machine that's running. Now this one is got a little bit more memory. It's got four four gig of memory, two virtual processors. The hard drive is indeed a dynamically expanding virtual hard drive. This one is a uh, I believe it's a Series Two virtual machine. Yes, it is. If you look right down here, it says it's a Generation Two virtual machine. Don't have that option with. Uh, uh, Exponent, or I'm sorry, it was Zen server. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and log in. All right, I'm gonna go out to uh, my Exponology server. And we're going to choose those same videos. Empty the recycle bin to be consistent. All right, now let's paste. There's 
there's a reason I'm not talking. The uh, graph is doing all the talking I need it to do. Now, it may be that the, I, I'm just making an assumption here, maybe the licensed version of Zen Server and maybe the licensed version of ESXi are, are as fast as Hyper-V when it comes to file transfer speeds. But uh, as you clearly see, there is some sort of issue on Zen Server. Now this is out of the box. That's set up Zen Server out of the box. I just installed it, same way with, Hyper, with uh, Windows. Uh, Hyper-V. I just installed it like I normally do. There's nothing special I did to tweak anything. No speed tweaks, just out of the box. It's you know, 112, 108, 106 megabytes per second transfer speeds maintained. Whether, you know, whether I'm running Windows 10 or Windows 7. And there's the proof right there. Now, in no way are my tests conclusive proof that one hypervisor is faster than the other, but Perception is reality, as they say, right? Isn't that the way it goes? My perception is, is that Hyper-V is faster. And I've just shown you through the use of a wonderful YouTube video that in my case it is. So those of you that might want to come out of the woodwork and go, well, you didn't tweak X or Zen server. You didn't tweak ESXi. No, but I didn't tweak Hyper-V either. It comes out of the box running that fast. And I've got, shit, i got crappy Qualcomm network cards in that Dell. If you think anything, it would do worse. So don't blame the network card driver. This is purely a, a matter of writing to a virtual hard drive, I believe. The bottleneck, I don't believe, is the network. The bottleneck, I believe, is, is how these virtual hard drives get the, write their data. And there is something on Hyper-V that is, that is tweaked out of the box better than it is with Zen Server and with ESXi. So don't take my word for it, do your own tests. I even challenged uh, 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 Morton over at my playhouse uh, to do a test on it as well. He did a video a few months back and, and I don't mean to bring all this up again, it's just I want to share this with you because it's something I observed you know when people tell me why are you such a, a Microsoft fanboy and it's not a matter of being a Microsoft fanboy, it's a matter of I need something to give to my customers that's going to work reliably and I'm not going to have these issues to where I have to go into the core of the operating system to figure out why something is running slow. I'm sure there's something that explains these slow write speeds on virtual hard drives in Zen Server and ESXi, but I don't have the time or the wherewithal to find out what those are. So. Um, your mileage might vary, but there you, there you have it. Uh, I'm going to keep the Zen server up and running. I built this box. It's running on that uh, one of those AMD quad-core 16-gigabyte uh, memory uh, MSI motherboards I had laying around. So I figured I'd put it in and put it to good use, just, you know, if I want to do Linux machines or something like that. And then I got, once I got the machine set up and got, you know, uh, the, the uh, virtual machine set up, I just had to test it, you know, just... To, to prove to myself that it wasn't something, some anomaly I was seeing uh, that wasn't correct. So your mileage might vary. Anyway, I hope you found this video entertaining and informative. As always, give us a thumbs up down below. If you liked it, leave your comments in the comments section. We take Patreon and PayPal donations. The links are in on my page. Just look in there in the uh, upper right hand or lower right hand corner of my title page. So thanks again for watching and uh, we'll see you on the other side.